Hello. I'm a little bit behind. I owe you all a couple of videos. Didn't get a lot done this week. So today, we will talk about what happens when you get sick in prison. By the end of this video, you're going to have some sort of idea of what the prison health care system is like. Okay? So, like I said, been a hectic week. Sorry I didn't upload a couple of days, but hopefully we are going to remedy that this week by increasing our output a little bit. Sound good? Good. I'm glad. Be sure to like and subscribe. Not really trying to get a bunch of money for this. It's just that if you like and subscribe, it tells YouTube that this is relevant content and it'll push it out to more people. words to live by all right <clears throat> let's get into this mm, 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 mm. i think i had something stuck in my teeth there okay prison health care so what happens when you get sick in prison a lot of people think well you get free medical care all this other stuff we got it easy no that is not the facts what actually happens at least in Kansas, where I spent my prison time, you do not get free health care. The health care system, the health care provider, is an independent contractor. They have an outside company that has a contract with the state. They come in and provide health care to inmates. That's how it works in Kansas. So, when you get sick, they have something called sick call. You go out you get a piece of paper usually from the officer's desk in the pod. You fill out that paperwork. You say what's going on with you and all that good stuff. Got a headache, you got a headache, fever, you got a fever, whatever. You put it on the piece of paper. The next day, you go up to the clinic at sick call. They will make an announcement over the intercom, PA system, whatever you want to call it, calling everybody to sick call. Usually each cell house goes at a different time and you go up there to sick call. You go up there to the clinic, you go up to the nurse's window, you hand them your slip of paper and you go sit down and wait for who knows how long. One time I was there from 7.30 in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon waiting to get seen. That's how it works. There is a $2 copay. <clears throat> it is not free. You have to pay $2.00 to be seen unless you're indigent two dollars might not sound like much however most people in prison don't they don't have a bunch of people on the street sending them money so two dollars can be quite a bit of money in prison you have to buy your own soap you have to buy your own toothpaste you know all your hygiene stuff your deodorant your writing supplies the state doesn't give you that unless you are indigent which in most cases, the state will pay you, oh, most state jobs will pay around 16 bucks a month. And indigent is considered $12 a month. So, if you get paid 16 bucks a month by the state, you got to buy your own hygiene stuff. Might not seem like a big deal, but it kind of is. When all you can afford to buy is, you know... A few stamps, a bottle of shampoo, and a bar of soap, and some toothpaste, and a toothbrush. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So two bucks is a lot of money. A lot of state jobs, best one that you can get, uh, state pay jobs is what it's called. When you have a job in prison, you get what's called state pay, at least in Kansas. It's a flat rate per day. So... I worked on an electric crew. I got the highest state pay that you could get. I got a dollar five a day. It worked out to twenty nine forty a month. Not a lot of money. So if you have the best paying job in prison, best paying state pay job in prison, then a two dollar copay is two days' wages. And most state jobs. State pay jobs in prison pay less than that. You're usually getting about 40 cents a day. 
40 to 60 cents a day. So there's that. Now, so you go in, you wait to be seen. When you do get seen, they check your vitals. Not to be confused with vitals. You don't get much of that in prison. You don't, you don't get good vitals. Anyway, you go in, they check your vitals. Uh, take your temperature, all that good stuff. Take your weight. And you get seen by somebody who doesn't know what the hell they're doing. It's usually not even a nurse. It's usually an intern or something like that. Um, they'll ask you about your symptoms, and then they'll usually give you some Tylenol, send send you back to your cell house. If you got <clears throat> um, chest pain, they give you Tylenol. You got a fever, they give you Tylenol. You have a sore throat, they give you Tylenol. If you break your face. They give you Tylenol. So, Tylenol is a cure-all in prison. And they only give you uh, a limited supply of Tylenol. If you're still in pain after your supply runs out, then you just got to buy it off canteen yourself. That's right, you have to buy your own medication. Now, from there, if you're still having problems, you go back to the clinic. Uh, you put in another sick call if you have to go back within two weeks then you don't get charged the second time you go and you get to see someone who is slightly less clueless about what they're doing they're slightly more qualified you might actually talk to somebody with some sort of certification um, you might talk to somebody who's qualified to work on horse toes think about that for a minute however nine times out of ten you will not talk to somebody who knows what they're doing I know maybe three, four nurses over the span of 11 years that I was incarcerated. I've known three or four nurses who worked in prisons that were decent. It's not a big number. So usually, if you keep going back, you will eventually get to see a doctor. But it will usually take you a month to get to that point. Not always, sometimes you might see them a little bit sooner, but usually it's going to take you about a month. And you may get your issue resolved, but you're probably not going to get your issue resolved. You're probably going to have problems with whatever you went to the clinic for. If it is a chronic problem, you're probably going to have that issue until you get out. Or maybe even the rest of your life if there's irreparable damage done because you can't get the treatment that you need. Don't know if you can see this on camera. This finger was dislocated, and I didn't go to the clinic at first because I knew they weren't going to do anything for it. It was dislocated and broken. I stomped on it. Um, that was how I reset it, actually. Not how I um, broke it. But um, when I finally did go and talk to them about it, they said, yeah, we're not going to do anything for you. You're just going to have to deal with that. So, eh, it's whatever. I've had chronic back pain. I've had chronic joint pain. I've had toothaches. You name it. I've had, you know, a lot of problems while I was in prison. And it's hard to get anything fixed. So, what ends up happening. There's certain things that if you take some corrective measures early on, they won't become a serious issue. Some stuff, if you neglect them, they do become serious issues. You know, they they could be real simple things. But prison is not big on helping people. And here's here's why. This is why the private companies that um, do prison health care are the way they are. In Kansas, it was Corizon. As of last month, their contract is up, and Kansas is not going to renew a contract with them. But in Kansas, it was Corizon, and Corizon operated in several states. Corizon has consistently given inadequate treatment to inmates. Consistently, they have had well over 40 lawsuits against them since 2014. And 
they failed to give inmates adequate care during the coronavirus pandemic, and that struck the prisons in Kansas pretty hard. There was a riot just a few months back. Just, you know, look up Lansing Correctional Facility, coronavirus riot, or some sort of combination of those terms, and chances are you'll see what I'm talking about. You can look it up on YouTube, you can Google it, whatever. It's out there. It's basically because Corizon failed to do their job, which was provide health care for inmates. And here's why they fail. They are paid about $70 million a year by the state to take care of inmates. So, here's $70 million. Okay, I can take this $70 million and I can treat inmates with it. Or I can take $10 million of that, treat inmates with it, and pocket the other 60 mil. That's what they do. I'm not saying those are the exact numbers, but that's basically the rundown on it. The less care they give you, the more money they put in their pocket. It's stupid. It seems to me like it's kind of a conflict of interest. Not in the legal sense, but in the sense that I'm interested in what is best for me. I am interested in my personal health. You have a vested interest in not giving me the care I need because that means it's less money in your pocket. If you do give me the care I need. See? So, prison health care sucks. So, if you want to turn off the video now, you can. Next thing I'm going to do is talk about some horror stories of prison health care. There was a guy, I worked in the infirmary for a while. There was a guy who came in, he had severe stomach pain. They gave him so many laxatives that he basically had diarrhea until he died of dehydration. He basically crapped himself to death. Pretty horrible thing. And I was a janitor. And that was not fun to clean up. And he was a really nice guy, and he didn't need to go that way. So there's one example. Another one in El Dorado. There was a guy, he went to the clinic. He had chest pains. He didn't go to sick call because he didn't have chest pains conveniently at a certain time in the morning. He had it in the afternoon. He was in a wheelchair. He goes to sick call, talks to the nurse at the window. He said, I'm having chest pains. The nurse said, come to sick call and, uh, you know, come to sick call in the morning. Go fill out a form. Come back in the morning. On the way back to his cell house, after talking to the nurse, he had a heart attack and died. Yeah. Real nice, huh? There have been several instances like that. And while I would love to talk your ear off about them, you know what, I'm going to end my horror stories there. Because, you know, maybe I'll, I'll talk about them in a future video, but I don't like talking about them. Because it really pisses me off. It really pisses me off. So, you know, there's, there's people in prison that did some pretty bad things. I'm not saying that prison should be club med. Uh, you know what? We all mess up. There are consequences to actions. You know, good or bad. However, prison, a prison sentence, you're, you're sentenced to incarceration. You're not sentenced to negligence. That's not something that's a part of your sentence. You should have adequate access to health care. You really should. I've seen guys who um, were in the infirmary with a, you know, a pretty bad medical condition, and they died, and and they could have been saved if the nurses had checked their vitals. You know, they're in the infirmary. They're supposed to come around. Um, regularly they have a schedule i don't know if it's every hour or every half hour but it's somewhere around there and they're supposed to check your vitals and there was another guy in the infirmary 
and they didn't check his vitals and they should have been checking his vitals and he died and they didn't even know about it like he laid there for six hours before they noticed he was dead you know stuff like that it's unnecessary during the coronavirus lockdown or, or problem when that hit the prisons they had guys showing up at the clinic who had fevers of over 100 degrees uh, temperatures of over 100 degrees I should say they had you know they were coughing sneezing they had all the symptoms of coronavirus and they were sent back to their cells well in Lansing especially in C2 it's you know five-man tanks or four-man tanks or something like that you have four or five guys living in a really small cell together they're all locked in there together and so six feet away most of the cells in Lansing are only six feet wide the four or five man tanks might be marginally larger than that but not much you're not staying six feet away from anybody plus you all use the same phones you all use the same kiosks to check your books or send an email to your family you know so you all use the the same weight machines when you go work out it's a breeding ground for illnesses it's bad it's real bad so prison health care sucks it's not free and even if it was you get what you pay for in this case you're paying two bucks which is a lot of money in prison but you still get what you pay for so it's not good if you are a healthcare professional and you're in it for the right reasons in other words to help people like if I'm not a big fan of those um, doctor's offices that you go to and the first thing you see when you come in a big sign talking about paying um, the first thing you do when when you talk to a nurse you know they, they want to ask you about how you're gonna pay all this other stuff you know I'm not a nurse I'm not a doc well I'm not a medical doctor um, but if I see somebody's hurt if I see somebody's in pain my first question would never be, you know, what can you pay me to help you? My question is, how can I help you? You know, so I don't have much respect for money, money hungry health care providers. I do not. I think you're a bigger crook than I am. And I spent 11 years in prison. So that's what I think of you. I put you in the same category as cops and I don't like cops very much. So there you have it. Another episode of From Prison to the Streets. I'm Eric. I am out of here. If you go to prison, don't get sick. Wash your hands. Cover your face. I will see you next time. Right. Right.